Yeah, and the trucks are really something. So James got to drive it. I got to drive the trucks for about 10 minutes just to my home. And I was going up Center Street. And just the people next to me are kind of like just looking. But there's this one family. They're like staring. And then they just stared at it for probably like a full minute. Just like. And I'm, I'm waiting. Eventually, maybe like CBC News is going to be like first headline ever. Like this local lawn care company's dogs on the trucks are so amazing. First ever accident from like the best marketing ever. <laughs> Hopefully not, but all I'm saying is, uh, you know, those dogs are pretty up there. <laughs> um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about sales and kind of selling strategies for you, the technicians, customer service reps. Uh, essentially, my day today with Amy and Arden, we're just on the phone eight hours a day, just talk, 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 book people in. But it really is a company-wide thing. So I started here in grade 10, um, COVID hit, school went online. And I'm just there on my computer, like two classes a day, just, you know, basically a bum. I couldn't get served because, you know, <laughs> not over 18 yet. But I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you know, what am I doing with my life right now? Like, it's, you know, school on its own, like, it's not enough. Doesn't leave me feeling good at the end of the day. So, yeah, I gave James a call and was blessed enough to have the opportunity to work here. And I got to see it right before kind of that growth. Um, and we went from 100 clients to 1,000 clients in our first year. Uh, this past year, 1,000 to 3,000. Right now we're sitting at 2,300 clients with about 730 grand booked in. We're aiming to get for 2.1 million at the end of the season, 6,500 clients, and that's gonna be a company-wide company -wide effort. So uh, let's hop into it. So number one, why you should be interested in sales, right? You guys are doing the physical labor, the customer service side, taking the incoming calls. Why should you be interested in it? So I just wanna kinda of touch on why sales is something that really goes beyond just the sales itself and something you can actually take as a skill into other aspects of your life. Number one, with sales and talking to people, selling them a product, you get to understand kinda of human psychology. Uh, like what is your customer thinking? What can I do to sweeten my words or say that right line that's gonna get a person to say, I wanna spend $400 on my lawn this season and make it look amazing. What can I do to kinda of complete the person to making the deal? And it goes beyond sales because you start to learn how to sell people on a product. But then beyond that, if you're writing an essay and you need an extension from a professor, if you're arguing politics at the dinner table or you're trying to convince somebody to do something or really anything, you get to learn how to deal with people and understand really what to say to them to communicate best and most effectively. Um, so that's something you can take from doing sales here at the company that's you know, way beyond just the work. Number two, playing a role in sales is perfect for anybody who loves to learn. So when you're doing sales as a technician, customer service rep on the phone, you're always going to get new questions. People are going to ask you different questions about the product, about the company, and it's always going to force you to kind of go back to our websites and learn more about what we offer and, you know, focuses on always improving your lines, what you're saying, and your knowledge of what you do as a worker. Um, number three, and this is probably one of my favorites, is going for sales means learning how to deal with rejection, but continuing to persevere. Amy, Arden, you guys know this. When we're on the phone eight hours a day calling people, in weather like this sometimes, saying like, hey Sandy, like this is Victor with Yard Dogs. Oh, I'm at work right now, I'm not super busy. Hey, like I know it's poor, it snows out right now, it's minus 10, we're in April, but next week the weather's gonna get warmer, we're gonna be starting services. You get a lot of people who are like, hey, like, fuck off, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> I, I do not want to hear just this high-pitched person on the phone right now trying to sell me fertilizer and weed control when it is snowing outside in Calgary and it does not seem like the spring or summer is anywhere close to being here. So you get to learn how to deal with rejection. Maybe 80% of the time you don't make the sale, but despite that you learn to persevere. And so if it's your first time bowling tonight, you're better at that because maybe the ball goes into the gutter the first three times. But because you learn how to deal with rejection and failure, but learn how to keep persevering, right? It goes way outside of the office whenever you're trying to pick up a new skill or something else. Uh, fourth, making sales demonstrates you believe in what you do and the work you produce. So if you're a good technician, a good customer service rep, you're giving the customers the tools to, this is how much watering you do to make sure the fertilizer works well. Um, you know that you're spraying that weed in the corner, making sure that it's gone and dead, spreading the fertilizer evenly. Um, if you're making sales, it shows you believe that you're adding value to the person you're selling. You have pride in the work you do. You know that you're adding value to their home. Um, so that's another reason you should be interested in sales here. It demonstrates how confident you are in the work you do and your pride in it. 
Number five, guys, and this is the big one. So Yard Dogs, as you can see, is pretty unique. We got the dogs on the trucks. Uh, we're a local company here in Calgary going the hardest at the dirt that you've ever seen anybody do it. And if we get 1.3 million in sales by June 30th, when we have our hot week from July 1st to July 10th, where we're all burnt out after working our butts off for three months, it's plus 30, we can't go out, spray the weeds, we cannot do the fertilizer, your week there that you were supposed to be working will be paid for by Yard Dogs, not a part of the government rules for vacation break. If us as a company can hit this target of 1.3 million, that is completely paid for and that's how we're gonna do it. So, <laughs> yeah, who's ready to make some sales, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. Um, all right, so next I wanna touch on how to sell. So if you look at our Google reviews, people are saying like the St. Bernard works great, my dog spots were fixed, my bear spots were fixed, my weeds are gone, I went to Yard Dogs for a service, I paid for that service, my lawn's looking good. But you'll always see in the reviews they'll mention, man, like I talked to this gal Amy on the phone, she was so personable, she asked how my day was going and everything, it was awesome. Amanda was the technician who was servicing my lawn, she was so friendly, just added a smile to my day, made my day, just looked so happy out there working. So the biggest thing for selling is to be personal and to be yourself. And there's four ways that you can really focus on that as a technician when you have the in-person chance to sell them. And that's number one, making eye contact. You know, you develop a personal connection with the people you're selling and talking about the services to. When you make that direct eye contact, you show transparency, you show you're being yourself, you're authentic, that you have nothing to hide. Um, so that's the first thing with being personal that you can really do to maximize sales as a tech and a, everyone else. Um, second and third is stand up straight and have your chin up. That shows that you take pride in the work you do. Um, you're confident about it. You're happy to be there. Um, you know, it makes a real big difference when you're selling if you're kind of slouched and show that you don't really care about yourself compared to when you stand up straight, keep your chin up and make that eye contact. And D, keep a warm smile. And I put the word magical in there because, you know, I always tell Arden and Amy on the phone, like when you're there, you give, you, you hype yourself up way beyond normal energy <laughs> because it really like, it's contagious. It, it, it magically goes through the phone and it kind of goes into the being of the person you're talking to, if that makes any sense, right? So when you're out there as a technician, like, hey, my name's Gabe, like, how are you doing today? You know? You gotta have that warm, magical smile and give them kind of that magical experience where it's not just buying the product, but they almost, you're so happy, you radiate so much joy and enthusiasm that they're kind of entranced into the magical experience and, you know, buy the package. So that's, <laughs> that's the number one right there. <laughs> uh, number two, have a knowledge of the product and confidence that they will enhance the happiness of the person you are selling to. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna be honest, uh, you're not having any integrity in selling if you think that the product we have is bad and is not gonna work, right? So you have to know that the product works. You have to know from the jobs and the work you do that it's gonna produce the results that you're selling because then when you're selling, you're being honest, um, you're actually confident you're adding value that they're gonna, at the end of the season, look at their front yard and they're gonna see that there's no dandelions there, the grass is green, and they're gonna be able to pop open a beer and smile at that fact, knowing that they didn't do any work. Um, so again, this stems in the work, the pride from the work that we do. Customer service reps, communicating watering, um, you know, making sure that we're putting in service calls when people have the extra weeds, um, and for the technicians, uh, the work you do as well. Number three, talk about our company's history, which we've had two excellent rundowns of from Liam, James, and that awesome YouTube video. Uh, it's my fourth time watching that YouTube video and it never gets old, it's amazing. <laughs> um, people love supporting the local underdogs. The companies we're up against, uh, Green Drop is Canada-wide, there are call centers in Winnipeg, you're on hold forever, you know, none of the money stays here in Calgary and in Alberta. Um, we are the local underdogs, weed mans in the United States and Canada. We are just here in Alberta. Um, we're local, everything stays here, 100%, um, you know, we employ people here in Canada. And that's something you can really say is like, hey, we're the local company here. We do an amazing job on services. Uh, why don't you give us a go? Started in Calgary, now Alberta wide. Always just a quick thing when you get to talk to neighbors of the people you're servicing, people walking, just, you know, seeing you do the work. Um, it's absolutely huge. And then fourth, point to the obvious. 
So <laughs> again, the trucks come up, but like, no kidding, right? It's like when you're servicing the lawn and you're talking to someone who may be interested in buying a package, door knocking on that you know, neighbor's property, Look at these dogs. Have you seen anything like them? Like, this is, this is Disney quality. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like them. You're not going to see any other lawn care company in the entire world do this. You have your uniforms to point to. We dress professionally. We carry ourselves. We stand up straight, chin up, warm, magical smile. Point to the obvious of, hey, like, look at the standards of these trucks. Look at your neighbor's lawn here that doesn't have any weeds that's looking amazing. Like, well, where's your hesitancy? This is, this is it right here, right? You guys are the biggest sellers as well. That's something Jimbo said. Our competitive advantage is you guys. That's what makes our company special. That's what we want to continue to have making our company special. So when you're selling there door to door as a technician, point to the obvious, easy peasy. That's going to win over a lot of people. Number five, get to the point. So sharpen your message and make your words matter. When you're out there as a technician, um, as we see with kind of the pyramid, uh, you guys are the top in the company, but then above that is the customer. So when you're out there doing your jobs, the customer always goes first, making sure you get that dandelion in the corner, that you're doing everything to give them the best lawn possible. So when you're talking to people about services and asking them if they'd be interested in getting a beautiful, amazing lawn for the season, you want to make sure that you sharpen your message, know the points well, you're being considerate of your own time that is needed for the customers. You have stuff to do in the evening. But in addition to that, the prospect that you're talking to, the neighbor, they're really busy too. So a part of the sales strategy and process is learning how to simplify things, get right to the point, and um, making good use of time while still being personable and having that warm, magical smile, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, number six, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. I stole this from Jordan B. Peterson. Does anyone know Jordan Peterson? Yeah, he's a really good guy. If you're looking for a good like self-improvement book or something, he's a really thoughtful thinker and he has a lot of good advice to offer. And the reason I point to this, we had a technician one year and he's just always grumpy about the other person's sales, the other person's Google reviews. Uh, we've had it in the office too where there's just someone exceptionally talented and in, instead of focusing on improving yourself and getting one step better from where you were yesterday, the thing that consumes your mind is how much better the person is next to you, and that's never going to get you to being top-notch. When you compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to someone else who's already existing today, it's a sure way to keep improving. Yesterday I did zero push-ups, okay, today I'm going to do five. I say, okay, yesterday I did five push-ups, let's up it to ten push-ups. That's always going to build your self-esteem, because if you're improving on one small thing every day with your sales targets, um, something personal in your life, you can always at the end of the day say, hey, I improved on this, you feel good about yourself. And you know that's really key. And it stops you from developing the vice of envy. And it'll take you, if you focus on that with sales, improving on one small thing a day, how could I have said that line better? How could I have been a bit friendlier to this person to get them kind of wanting the service? Um, you're always going to improve and you're going to make huge strides of improvement and do a great job. Um, and lastly, guys, send your friends and family our way. You've seen the trucks, you've seen the training here, you see how we, how we run business, how we do business, and where we want to be. Who wouldn't want to send their friends and family to a company that's going to get them an amazing green and weed-free lawn? And with hitting that 1.3 million for the end of their June 30th, that whole vacation is going to be completely paid for by the company Yard Dogs, and it is going to be a team effort. So uh, let's do this, guys. Thank you so much for the time today. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're looking forward to a good season. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Nice work. Cool, guys. So that pretty much wraps up the morning here. Um, before we jump into a big group photo, Zorn's going to do for us. Um,